everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Peter Clayton's behind the camera. We're in the garage. We're posting this on Facebook, as we do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And uh, on Friday, we live stream from the dining room table a three-hour radio show. We've got guests, we've got music, we've got phone calls. It's a full-on radio program, just like you'd get on AM or FM, except it's online. JeremyCordo.com, if you want to go and have a look at that. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun. And it's brought to all of us, and thank you to my sponsors, Jim Elder, Elder's Fine Art on Melbourne Street, North Adelaide, and uh, The Rising Sun down there at uh, Kensington. The Rising Sun, probably the oldest, it's certainly the oldest roadhouse. I'm thinking there may be an older pub somewhere in the city, but I don't know. 1845, I think it was, was built. Lovely old place, lots of atmosphere. Anyway, two great establishment kind of sponsors. I love that. Adelaide is full of that sort of tradition. I don't know if you know Adelaide. Um, it's a lovely city. It's a simple, easy city to get around, unlike some of the huge five, six million population cities of Sydney and Melbourne. It's a, it's a, it's a human scale, lovely city. Anyway, I digress. We were talking the other day about the fact that they were picking on Coles and Woolworths because they had too much market power. And the assumption was, or the, the indicator was, that they were not using that market power responsibly or sensitively. And then they got stuck into Bunnings because, oh God, they've just done this too well. I mean, they got 70% of the hardware and plant business. And gee whiz, as I was saying to you the other day. Where, where, where do you go in business? You work hard, you employ people, you build up a company, uh, you, you establish a customer base, and then they turn around and tell you, you're too successful, you've got too much market power, and you might not be trusted with it. Well, look, being in business these days is not easy. I know that. Uh, it's a minefield. There are just so many things you have to navigate just to get from the beginning to the end of a week. It is true that most countries have antitrust laws. Now, this is where a company can be broken up if it's discovered that they are using their monopolistic power to the disadvantage of the community. It's the atom bomb. No corporate would want the ACCC to drop that atomic bomb on them. I always thought that the ACCC had some limited powers to guide companies if they got a little bit too rambunctious. Probably, you know, the ACCC just talking about this, that is, the, the power that they want, will be enough to correct any wayward behaviour of Coles and Woolworths or Bunnings or anyone else who is, dare I say it, too successful. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I suppose we're in the middle of, um, well, it's not a COVID epidemic, thank God, or pandemic, but I am told there is an obesity epidemic. And I know, look, you walk around and you see a lot of people who are overweight. I think, you know, Honestly, I don't know what you think about this, Pete, but I think half the world is overweight and the other half of the world is starving to death. How does that work? Yeah, well, I agree with you, yes. Strange. We, we, are, far, we are far too heavy um, in Australia. Yeah, well, I don't know. I've never succumbed to the idea of having three meals a day. I, 
and particularly since I lost 20 kilos, um, I have one meal a day. I don't know what the ideal human weight is, by the way. I, they had this thing called um, BMI, uh, Body Mass Index. Uh, that's our height by our weight squared. Now, I failed maths, so I'm not going to go even down that avenue. Thank you. But it's been used for decades as a guide for doctors to determine how overweight we are. The body mass index. We are now told that this is not a reliable guide. Apparently it's, it's where we put on or where we put our fat, our weight that counts. Now clearly we need a better more definitive system. Uh, the, does anyone have any ideas? This is Thursday, tomorrow, ring me at <laughs> the dining room table and tell me. I suppose doing it from the dining room table is not probably the ideal venue. <laughs> and occasionally we have lamingtons on that table, I must tell you. Uh, so if it's not the uh, body mass index, what is it? I think it might be um, what we feel. How we feel. Well, a lot, but I did, uh, a few years ago, I heard that uh, one other way of working it out was a ratio between your, your waist measurement and your hip measurement. And it was something like if your waist was 110% yeah. of your hip measurement, that's heart attack waiting to happen. Something like that. That's too complicated. I mean, what, what happens, I just work on the basis that if I have to put another, uh, if I have to adjust my belt <laughs> so I can keep my pants up, I know there's something wrong. Uh, but these days I have to put holes in the other end to keep my pants on. Yes. But I think we do need a better system. How we feel, what we think, how, we, how do we judge our well-being? How we live, how we look, how happy we are, how content we are? I, I, I think the other way to tell is look in the mirror, honestly. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, who does that? <laughs> well, I think we should do it more often. <laughs> who looks in the mirror, honestly? Anyway, the BMI uh, doesn't take any of this sort of ethereal stuff into account. Self-image. I'm, 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 I'm foraging around here for an expression. Self-esteem. Yeah, 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 that's, that's what I'm looking for. Self-esteem. I want to feel good about myself. And when I was 99 kilos, which is only, you know, sort of three, four months ago, I, I certainly didn't. Dragging myself around I was. Self-esteem. I reckon it's how you feel in your skin. And you can't measure that, I don't think. It's in your head and your heart. And people are not rude enough to sort of actually tell you. Hey, Jeremy, put on a bit of condition, haven't you? Sort of thing. Uber, Uber has agreed to pay the taxi industry $270 million to compensate them for their, that's Uber's, entry into the Australian market, which simply destroyed what was a very successful business model. You know, people would buy a taxi license. When I say a taxi license, you're buying the plates. They would pay probably $500,000 for a set of plates, two plates. And quite rightly, they would regard it as an asset, an investment, one in fact that you could trade. A license these days might be worth, I don't know, I'd hate to think, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars maybe, if you're lucky. Now I don't use Uber, 
Pete, do you use Uber? No. No, I don't. But I know people who do, and they love it, but to each his own. With the way things are these days, hacking and all of that, I just will not give anyone my credit card number to sort of put on his file in his computer. <laughs> of the, and this is interesting, of the 270, actually I think it was 272 million dollars, the lawyers will get 38 million the taxi drivers Australia wide will each get about 27 thousand dollars each now here's the question do you want to drive a cab or study law <laughs> <laughs> this is somewhat worrying. A quarter of those people who have reported a crime to the police wouldn't do it again. Now clearly we need citizens to find reporting a crime to be a rewarding experience and we want the criminals to say I wouldn't do it again. Not the victims or the witnesses for God's sake. Well I will tell you a quick little story. My son Christopher was staying in an apartment in town and he had his bike stolen. He, I bought him an electric bike. He's in the process of getting his driver's license. He hasn't been really terribly keen to, 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 uh, to get it. I mean, I was there at the police station door when I was 16 and 10 months. And I got my driver's license on the day I turned 17, which was the law of the day. But that was in the day when a policeman would take you around and He'd make his own judgment about you and uh, so forth. And I hate to think how many years ago that was. But the remarkable thing was that Christopher's bike was stolen from the basement of this apartment where they had cameras. And you couldn't get into the apartment or you couldn't get into the basement where the bike was without a card. You couldn't get out of the basement without a card. Swipe card. So anyway, Christopher went to the police and told them what had happened. Then he went to the people who controlled the cameras and whatnot in the apartment building and got the evidence the picture of the bloke coming out of the elevator quite obviously no problem identifying him I wouldn't think then because he had to have a swipe card the people in the apartment building knew exactly who it was who stole the bike so Christopher runs back to the police and the police say we're too busy. I mean do you know how many rapes and... and now look I, I sympathize with the police, I do. But you know here you've got somebody dead to rights. He is a thief, he's stolen a bike from this kid. And it was, it was a $5,000 bike too, wasn't it? Did yes, it was, it was, I, I paid $6,000. It, yeah. it I bought it for, for his uh, 21st birthday present. Anyway, it, it, it was a, an electric bike, $6,000. And the police would be able to go down to that apartment building and say, would you mind telling me who it was who stole Christopher Cordo's bike? Then they go and arrest him. They haven't got the time. They haven't got the time. 
stopping that criminal now would possibly save them a lot of heartache down the road because if this guy gets away with this and it looks like he probably will he's not going to stop at that there are things that are wrong in society anyway I'm, I'm uh, I'll, I'll perhaps go into the police station myself in the next few days and see what I can do uh, I got that off my chest uh, don't you love democracy 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 Russian style that's the democracy you're having when you're not having a democracy <laughs> Vladimir Putin re-elected for the fifth or was it the sixth time I'm not sure even he probably has lost count re-elected in a landslide nearly 90 percent approval my god oh well no one seems to care about the fraud or the lies or deceit you can kill your opponents, you can put them in prison, you're just fine. You remain on the United Nations Security Council with the right of veto. Warm congratulations coming in from China and India and North Korea and Iran and I will bet Cuba is somewhere in there. <laughs> Strange world, isn't it? I still think somebody's going to bump him off. But uh, I don't know why he even, even pretends to have a democracy. He just rules by decree. Now, uh, here's a wild thought. You know all that on hold music that they play us? Pete, you could sell them something really entertaining instead of the crap they... Yeah, it's going to be nice, yes. On hold music. There would be millions and millions of hours that are wasted. And some of the music is like ding dong, ding dong. What a wasted opportunity. You have people listening, millions of people listening. And all you can do is ding dong. In this day and age of interactivity, one could ask questions, entertain, research, preach do all kinds of things evangelize i don't know but ding dong or just mindless wallpaper music i will <laughs> wasted opportunity ears do not come lightly nationwide industrial action air services australia are threatening a strike over easter have you heard that means, of course, Air Services Australia, nothing will move. That's the, the um, uh, air traffic controllers and all of that. It's rosters, it's money. Ah, it's also Easter. <laughs> the government wants to treat GPs, general practitioners, as employees. P-A-Y-E. You know, pay as you earn employees. They have forever been independent, for want of a better word, professionals or contractors. They are clearly. There is no, what, what, what do the tax people say, master-servant relationship. They have staff expenses, business expenses. Clearly it's a business that they run in their little practice. This is this is not about getting these doctors to pay tax. I, I think it's really just about getting them to pay payroll tax. Payroll tax. The most, the craziest tax of all. You're paid to give other people a job, to employ people. You're taxed for that. You're penalised for that. I hope the AMA is equipped uh, physically and intellectually and financially to fight this on behalf of the doctors 
of Australia. Is there a ruling? There probably would be that if this is brought about because of the government, federal government's greed, turning a, a tradition upside down that's been there for forever, do they, does the federal government think that the, the bill will not be passed on to the patients? Oh, that doesn't matter. It's just more government greed and government stupidity. I don't know what to make of it. How much time have I got, Pete? Nothing. All right, OK, I agree with you. I agree. I do think sometimes I go on a bit long. Um, now, don't forget, by the way, if you have paintings of interest, one of our sponsors would love to hear from you, uh, Jim Elder Fine Art, you can go to the website, which is elderfineart.com.au, all one word, and have a look at the website. But if you have a, a painting, you're a bit... Mm, at odds as to whether you want to keep it or whether you think it's valuable. Uh, Jim is always looking for interesting art, paintings of international and local Australian significance. I told you about the Hans Heysen that uh, brought, I think it was over $30,000 at the last Christmas auction. He's got people all over the world who are looking for investment in art, you can ring 8267-2869. 8267-2869. Jim will give you an absolutely free appraisal. And you can say to yourself, well, heck, I didn't know that it was so valuable. I'm going to keep it. Or you could say, I need the money. Show me the money. Now, it is the 21st, isn't it, Pete? Yes. South African police opened fire on 12,000 African demonstrators, killing 67 and injuring 176 at the police station in Sharpville. It was 1960. That is what apartheid does. We do not want a separate racial or racially based system in Australia because it sows the seeds of this kind of rubbish. Malcolm Fraser was elected leader of the Federal Liberal Party on this day in 75. Bruce Springsteen's first Australian concert at the Sydney Entertainment Centre in 1985. Muhammad Alam. Have you ever heard of Muhammad Alam, Pete? No. Well... Muhammad Alam, 108 years of age, on this day in 1964, uh, he was an Afghan herbalist, one of Australia's best known and most controversial characters. He conducted his business in Sturt Street in the city. He had a daughter at the age of 90. He was 90. Wow. He left an estate worth £12,000, the bulk of which was in legacies to organisations caring for children. He's buried in Centennial Park Ceremony, uh, a cemetery, and he died on this day in 1964. Um, yum, 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 yum. A small part of Centennial Park in New York has been declared or dedicated to John Lennon called Strawberry Fields. It's the spot where he and his wife, Yoko Ono, took their last walk. It was this day in 1984. Kate Smith recorded, I think, one of the most beautiful patriotic songs I have ever heard. Has to be one of the best in the world. God bless America. Gee, Kate Smith. What a voice. Wow. God bless America. The Beatles made their first appearance at the Cavern Club in Liverpool as guests of the regular Thursday night group, uh, the Blue Jeans. 
who later became the Swinging Blue Jeans. That was 1961. These days, of course, the blue jeans would have holes in them. I would imagine. And at the other end of the spectrum, Johann Sebastian Bach was born. He fathered... How many kids do you reckon, Pete, he fathered? No idea. Twenty. Really? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty children. Wow. Frank Hardy was born. The Australian National Airways Avro Anson three-engine Fokker, the Southern Cloud, disappeared during a storm in the Southern Highlands uh, on a trip from Sydney to Melbourne. Crashed near Kyandra in New South Wales. Wreckage and remains of victims found by accident October 58, but went down 1931. Wow. All right, one more. Bronco Billy. Bronco Billy Anderson was born in Little Rock, Arkansas, one of the original American movie actors. He starred in a one-reeler, The Messenger Boy, in 1902. He was born in 1882, one of the original American movie stars. Thank you so much for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tomorrow, join us at the dining room table. 9 o'clock till 12, jeremycordo.com. That's where you pick us up. You can do it on your phone or your iPad or your i... Whatever you do. <laughs> anyway, we'll have some fun. Peter Clayton and I'll be back. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Believe in yourself. And thank you for viewing the Court of Public Opinion. All I left behind should come as no surprise to me since I fell through the black hole of your eyes. Only little things inconsequential I could say of all I left behind with you along the lost highway. Moccasins in Tonopah But I had you so I just let them go Flannel shirt I wore Keep me from the cold When we drove from Boston All the way to Buffalo the Leather boots I bought so many miles ago I took them off to follow you Into the Ohio Never did my armor feel so thin Silk was all I had between me And your skin like water I lost it Of all I left behind with you along the lost time.